Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Art of Safe Scum, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to be doing more Skaven content. You guys know that I love playing the Skaven, I know that many of you do as well. In the past, I have done a video on the basics of how to play the Skaven. Everything from make sure you build your buildings wide so that you fill all the spaces whenever possible. Make sure you do things like build the defenses, etc., etc. There's a there's a lot of information in that video. I, I suggest that you go watch it if you're new to the Skaven. But... What I want to do for today's video is what should you be focusing on in the mid game that's going to carry you into the late game for a very strong campaign. There are several things that you should focus on in the mid game for Skaven that will absolutely make you a steamroller. And the first thing that we're going to look at is your capital buildings. There are two buildings that should be in every single capital city that you have, whether it is a single province like this in Aragrad, or whether it is something like this, which is a three. Uh, the only exception to this in your provinces are things like these oblasts that don't really have a, a, a true capital in them. You want to build this building right here. This is your Warlock Engineer building. And this gives you capacity for Warlock Engineers, and Warlock Engineers are the hardest uh, hero to increase the capacity for because you have to have a tier five building or a tier five settlement to be able to do that or you have to use the warlock engineer under city building uh, which you can only get so many of those ever so many turns so this is your best bet to be able to do that warlock engineers are important because well let's look at one in your army they do a lot of things increase mobility they increase the reload reduction speed. They increase the ammunition of the entire army. They also increase trade tariffs. We have missile strength. Active ability that increases accuracy. We have uh, range increase. And we have arm piercing uh, damage and explosive damage increase. If I can get the darn thing to stay up there. Come on, man. I'm going to get it. There it is. Right like that. They also, of course, boost income in the local region, and they can do other things on the campaign map, as well as being casters. It's important to increase the capacity of your warlock engineers. They also can spread under cities, which we'll get to here in a little bit. The second building that you want to make sure that you focus on is this one. Regardless of what else you're doing in your capitals, you want to build this building because this increases your Lord Recruit rank. I don't need to explain the Lord Recruit rank and why that, that's important, except for in the Skaven, there are particular milestones that are global bonuses for some of your characters. So if we look at any warlord, for instance, you want to recruit warlords at as high level as possible so that you can increase. Uh, right now, if I were to recruit a warlord, you would see that uh, they're recruiting at rank nine. If I look at this Warlord, he's at level 12, and soon he will have access to any of these three abilities that are active at rank 13. So you want to save the 12th point, and when he's at rank 13, you want to put it into Ravenous Expansion. And what this does is give you extra growth and increases the faction-wide income from settlement buildings. So this is big. You recruit this guy... You get him up to level 13, you put two points into here, you put some important followers on him, namely the Bell Polisher and the uh, the Hell Pit Attendant. The Hell Pit atten Attendant is a 10% research rate. And then, uh, can you put Bell Polishers on these guys? Yes, you can put Bell Polishers on them if they are available. So I'm going to switch him around to a Bell Polisher before I disband him at level 13, and that effect will still be active even though he is disbanded. Which brings us up to techs. The tech that you absolutely want to focus on, you want to rush it, is Monstrous Abominations because that gives you that help hit attendant. You'll notice that my research rate is sitting at 495%, and that is because of all of those followers on all the different characters. The other things that you want to focus on in the early game, specifically, are these three. You want to get Ruthless Plans, Ferocious Plans, and Devious Plans. And the reason you go with those ones is you want to unlock all three 
of these lines, so to speak. But then you should rush to monstrous abominations. After you've done that, I think you go after the plans. So you're running to get to like ingenious plan because it gives you food capacity and food every turn. Plans within plans, same thing. Uh, oppressive plans over here, th plus 30. These are free capacities. They're very easy to get. I think they're one uh, per. So one turn regardless of your research rate. So you want to run down those particular avenues to get those so that you can increase your food capacity because this is your ability to expand quickly. One of my favorite mechanics of the Skaven is the Undercity mechanic. And I'm going to show you a couple configurations that I use religiously, uh, but you can do whatever it is the hell you want with your Undercities. I have particular purposes and particular classes of Undercities that I use. The first one that we're going to talk about is the Spreader City, and it looks like this. This one was set up with a special Warlock Engineer from the uh, Scheme of Doom. You can do this with a regular Warlock Engineer. Just understand that you're going to have 20% less discoverability when you set it up this way, and you're not going to have the extra Warlock Engineer or research rate. So there is that. But the purpose of this is to build it in a very secure location in allied territory. There is no way that that building is going to be destroyed. If you look here, we've got me to the east, me to the, to the north, me and some enemies to the west, and enemies to the south. So there's a lot of territory for them to get through to get to Castle Templehof. They're probably not going to be destroying that. In fact, I would argue that the only player on this board capable of destroying that city is probably me at this point in time. After you get a spread, like here at Fort Oberslythe, you build food under cities. Now, in this instance, this is a minor settlement, and it is more likely to be destroyed by the AI. So, in this instance, I only build the single food building there. This generates me an extra food every single turn. So really, this undercity here that is doing the spreading is currently only costing me one food and 100 per turn. However, if we go over here to this spread that happened at Castle Drakenhof, I've got a real food undercity. Again, in allied territory, this is going to be a level five uh, settlement, good luck, AI not taking it. What I'm going to be doing here is bumping this up to uh, three food per turn. I'm building this building that is going to give me two food per turn and 100. And we're going to conceal it. So if you do that all the way through, we're paying for our spreader building. We're paying for our research rate. And we're generating a little extra food. So that is the food building. That is the whole food scheme with uh, the spreader building, again, in allied territory. The second type of undercity that I typically set up is the movement chain. So what I have done is I've set up a SAC region. I'll talk about SAC regions here in a second. And in each one of these cities, I have built buildings that generate a little bit of food and help me move through the region more more easily. I have not built it. Oh yeah, it's building right there. So you can see that I've got stations here for recruitment and replenishment, but I'm basically using the Bretonian factions as punching bags at this point in time, because what I'm doing is uh, generating this SAC region for the purposes of expanding into other regions. But right now we're talking about under cities. This city gives me 10% movement range for starting in the region plus an additional 10% movement range in the region and casualty replenishment rate. I'm also generating one food per turn here. So you can see here I've got one, two, three, four, five, five extra food per turn generating right here. And you set these up by sacking the city first and then setting up the undercity with the army. This would be impractical to do with a warlock engineer's uh, because it takes so long to set them up. And these are temporary. So after we have accomplished our expansion goals, wherever we're expanding, we're going to capture all these and they'll become our expansion region. But the region, reason we have 
SAC regions is we used to use a SAC city in Warhammer 2. Well, Warhammer 3 changed the food mechanics. So now we need a SAC region. And what we're actually doing here is hunting the armies that are going to spawn in this region for food and loot. And we're going to use that to expand in a different region. So right now I'm currently expanding into the Chaos Dwarves region. I'm going to take out Imric, and then I'm going to have to immediately fight Kugath because he's already de declared war on me. But I'm using the money and loot, or the money and the loot, the food and the loot that we're obtaining from beating up on Bretonia to expand this region here. All these provinces will be captured at max tier or close to max tier, like right here, and then built up rather rapidly because we are we have military activity going on in this region over here that's paying for it. And that's the whole reason we have set this whole thing up. Again, after we have destroyed, I got some frame rate loss there for some reason. Uh, but if once we've finished over here in the dark lands, capturing and building those settlements up, then we're going to come through here and wipe all these settlements out. You can see I've got a couple armies here. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. I'm going to be uh, doing a video on some wacky uh, throt armies, but like for instance, this is go see my trash army video, which is the whole purpose of this is just to sack cities and level up characters cheaply. 2,000 with very little military capability, but still capable of sacking these settlements over and over and over again. If you look at like this army over here, much more capable anti bretonian army that we're going to be looking at. This one, full weapons team. You, you get the idea. So if you want to see that video on wacky molder armies, then please hit the subscribe button. Follow me here at The Art of Safes Coming, and I'm going to wrap it up for this one here today. Thanks to you for tuning in, and hopefully we'll see you on another one here at The Art of Safes Coming.